have the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. These are both powered by not a Qualcomm chip, but a Tensor processor, Google's own chipset. Now let's find out how good it is for us gamers. So let's jump in. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome back to another gaming video on a smartphone. This time, as you know, it's the 6, Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. Now, if you join us for the very first time, we do gaming videos on the channel, so hit that subscribe button and notification icon to get notified for more videos like this. As you know very well by now, the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro are available to purchase or you have yours at this point in time. But you're wondering, how good is uh, Google's new processor, the Tensor processor for gaming. Now, just some background history of what the Tensor processor is. Uh, Google has talked a lot about that. I'll leave a link for that video. But this is something they've done as a wholly designed chipset. And they partnered with Samsung to craft this brand new chipset. Now, when it comes to what this brings to the table, it brings a ton of features and all functionality. So on the first, first off, we know that these two devices uh, come in two different sizes and displays. The Pixel 6 is 6.5 inches, the 6 Pro is 6.7 inches, and they both offer high refresh rates. You've got 90 hertz on the Pixel 6 and 120 hertz on the Pixel 6 Pro. Both of them are adaptive refresh rates, and you can change that in the settings, although you can only switch from 60 hertz to adaptive, which means it will variate for you. So, so it's a standard, simple approach, all right? We get that part. Now, there are also some gaming features that Google has actually enacted into the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro within the software. So when you open up a game, you actually will get a, a game controller icon that pops up, or you can go into your settings and just search for like game or gaming, and that will bring up uh, the game mode where you can go ahead and do a couple of things. You can take screenshots, uh, you can of course turn on do not disturb, you can also uh, screen record at the maximum refresh rate of the displays, either 90 or 120, and you can see your frame rates on screen, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I love that more companies are doing this for us gamers. Now, in terms of what we expect for gaming, now they come with massive batteries. The Pixel 6 comes with a 4,600 milliamp battery, while the Pixel 6 Pro comes with a 5,000 milliamp battery. And we'll talk about the battery life and all that st stuff in a second, but that is enough for a lot of our gaming needs. So let's start off with our very first game, right? This, of course, is Call of Duty Mobile. This is my starter for all bench tests. And with Call of Duty Mobile here, we have some really solid performance as you would expect. Now we have our settings maxed at everything high, and we're able to play on both the 6 and the 6 Pro, getting uh, 60 frames per second, as you can see with our game bench uh, benchmark scores. So nice solid performance across the board, and that was really good to see. So that's a good start, right? Great. Now let's move on to PUBG Mobile. Now, this is a game that can be graphically intensive, and some of you say, uh, you know, I can unlock it to 90 hertz, 120. I went with just the standard approach because that's what a lot of people do when they play PUBG Mobile, right? So we had PUBG Mobile on both the 6 and the 6 Pro, and it did play well. In terms of settings, though, we're only able to achieve one of our two key settings. We're able to play on Smooth Extreme, and on Smooth Extreme, we're able to get 60 frames per second on both the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. So that's solid gameplay performance, as you would expect with every device we've used this year from either the Galaxy or the iPhone. Now, the one thing we could not do was play Ultra HD Ultra, which said it was not available. Now, this doesn't mean that the processor can handle it. It just means it's currently not available from the developer. So that option was not there. So, that might be a little strike to the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, but we'll see how things develop again. I got these devices before they actually hit the market, so let us put that in mind. Now, speaking of things that we do need, as we put in mind, are cases. And you guys know I love using speaking cases. I've been using them for years, and they've been a, a, a channel sponsor on this channel, especially with our gaming videos. And I like using speaking cases when I game because number one, they bring, provide some nice thermal protection and they provide some protection for devices, especially devices like the Pixel 6 Pro and 6 with that massive camera bump. Now with the Pixel 6 Pro, I am using the liquid air case. It's got that, you know, rigid back, which gives me better grip for something with a larger display. While with the Pixel 6, I'm using uh, the rugged armor case. I like the feel and fit for it, but any of these cases will work. And if you want to use them, 
Use the links down below. And also check out the uh, Power Arc charger because the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro do not come with any chargers in the box. Okay, so we've got our cases, our phones are protected. Let's move on to the very next bad boy that we are waiting for, which of course is Genshin Impact. Now Genshin Impact is a game that is graphically intensive. And of course we downloaded it, we set it to the highest graphical setting at 60 frames per second. I maxed out everything, which is what I do in every test. And this is where things became quite shocking for me. So within the first five minutes of gameplay, I started seeing just variable frame rates on screen while gaming using uh, the Pixel 6 Pro and also with GameBench. And you can see on GameBench that yes, the average frame rate was still staying steady, but it was variating between 28, 14, 30. Honestly, within the first five minutes, it dropped down from 60 frames per second down to uh, you know the mid 40s. And by the time I finished playing 30 minutes of gameplay of Genshin Impact on both the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, I ended up with an average frame rate of 35 and 36 frames per second respectively. So that should say something. Now I have not seen those kind of numbers. And again, this to me is a bit shocking. And I can say, hey, it might be something that has to do with an update, but also might be just the performance of the chipset itself. So that is something to take note. Now, some of you are wondering, okay, how does that you know, correlate with benchmarks? What are the benchmarks for this, this device? So let's go to Geekbench where we ran some benchmarks on here and see what we actually got. Now on the 6 Pro, we got a single core performance of 1001 and a multi-core performance of 2677. Now, when we look at that in comparison, that is below the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Exynos model, that's the Exynos 2100, which comes in at 3,176, also below uh, the S21, the, the OnePlus 8 Pro. Now in single core performance, that actually beats out the Exynos uh, performance. So you see that there. Now I haven't run any comparisons with the, the uh, Qualcomm version, which I'll be doing a separate video for you guys, especially if you wanna see what that gaming performance actually looks like. But the performance is much lower and that might be some of the issues we're seeing here with some of the games I just mentioned, especially with PUBG and Genshin Impact, which is quite important. But set that aside for a second. When it comes to the higher frame rates, does it actually meet up to those higher frame rate demands? And I can tell you, evidently it does. Uh, playing Vainglory, which uh, right now, um, <laughs> Daniel is laughing, he's like, why did you even try? I just wanted to show you the frame rates to actually play the game because I'm terrible at it. But it does 120 frames per second there, easy and solid. So you can achieve higher frame rates on the device. Now, some of you also ask, hey, Thunder E, what about emulators? Can we actually play emulators? So I went ahead and put Redream on, which is a Dreamcast emulator, and I was able to actually play on that. And I, it played well, even though it was showing 120 frames per second on the inbuilt frame rate counter, it's actually 60 FPS. I'm not sure why that happened, but it ran really well, ran smooth. So I think your emulators will work on here. I wasn't able to try all. I did try also uh, the, um, the GameCube emulator, I believe, uh, but I didn't try the, uh, the PlayStation emulator. So at least you have an idea that emulators will work on the system. Now you guys were probably looking and going, hmm, was that the Razer Kishi? That didn't fit quite well. Yes. So that's another thing you're gonna run into with the Pixel uh, 6 and 6 Pro because these devices have that massive camera bump. Uh, game controllers, mobile controllers, like the Razer Kishi, which basically house your, your smartphone into like a gaming console or portable gaming console, just don't fit properly, especially Kishi, which I found to be a bummer. It didn't work well with the Pixel 6 or the 6 Pro simply because of the massive camera bump and how it is housed on this device. So if you, you have a Kishi, you're looking to pick one up for this, I would say go with a Bluetooth controller because that's the only thing that will work effectively. Now, speaking of using a, a controller and also playing other things, we do know that Google has services like Google Stadia and we also know about Xbox Game Pass. Now, I set up both services and they do run well. Again, they're streaming services. This is more just to do with the connectivity. And I have to say they've both improved quite well. Going through Xbox Game Pass, menu was fast, and also the games loaded faster and I was able to play without any issues whatsoever. 
Same thing with Stadia. I did have some hiccups, which is kind of weird, but I don't think that has anything to do with the service. I think it's just something that happens once in a while, but it still played really well. So if you're thinking of, of game streaming services, you're gonna get very good performance. Now, two last things I wanna talk about, of course, are temperatures first, where we got temperatures about 107 degrees at its highest point, playing Genshin Impact for about 30 minutes or so. And I think that's the best I got in temperatures, highest I got in temperatures overall. And I think that's pretty solid. The device didn't run too hot in comparison to some other devices that could reach like 115 or so. So that was pretty cool. And I got those temperatures from both the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. When it comes to battery life, this is where I would say currently right now, uh, I am still in the learning process of what that battery life really means. I would say on the Pixel 6 Pro, you're still gonna get solid battery life while gaming, uh, where I did play for a total of say, maybe about uh, three to four hours on the device, and I went from 100 to about, about 60, about 65%. So take it as you will. I was playing a lot of Genshin Impact. I was playing a lot of PUBG on there. Um, so I wanted to play games that were more intensive in terms of graphical performance and would drain. While with the Pixel uh, 6 itself, uh, playing for around the same amount of time, I went from 100% down to roughly around 55. So a little bit more, but then again, you, you've got two different battery sizes. Now I didn't try this with, um, uh, it's set at 60 hertz. I wanted to play at its best setting as possible. So what does that all mean for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro when it comes to gaming? It means first off, you can game on this device. That is very true. But it also means that a lot of things there do not match up to high-end mobile gaming at this point. I don't know if it's the processor itself or if it's just software. I cannot make that full decision right now, but I can just show you what I got. And hopefully you guys will understand that maybe there might be some things that Google can do to improve that experience, or we're just stuck with that for the meantime. So if you have any questions, any comments about gaming on the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro, let me know. Stay tuned guys, I do have a solid versus for you coming up with the Pixel 6 Pro versus the Galaxy S21 Ultra, covering everything from camera, video, uh, gaming, and just overall which one is better. And of course, check out our accessories videos on both devices that you see here. Thank you very much guys, and always enjoy your entertainment.